Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create faux 3D waffled spheres from scratch. Before we begin, click the small subscribe button at the lower right corner to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. If my tutorials have helped you spark your creativity, please help to support my channel by becoming a patron through Patreon for as little as two bucks a month. Click the card at the upper right. Create a new document by going to File and New. Make its width and height 1000 pixels each and its resolution 150 pixels per inch. The color mode is RGB and 8 bits per channel. Make the background white. Then click Create or Open. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Open your Single Column Marquee Tool and click anywhere inside the document to make a vertical line selection. Go to Edit and Stroke. Make the width 55 pixels, the color black, and tick Center. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Go to View and make sure Snap is checked. If it isn't, just click it. Press V on your keyboard to open your Move tool and go to the vertical bar. Press and hold the Shift key as you drag the bar to the left edge of your document. It'll snap in place because we have Snap checked. We'll make six copies of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J six times. Check Auto Select. This automatically makes each of the bars active whenever we click on them without having to go to the Layers panel to find that bar to make it active. Press and hold Shift and drag the bar to the right until it snaps to the right side of the document. Release your cursor and go back to the bar on the left. Press and hold Shift again as you drag the next bar over. Continue to drag bars across your document. Don't be concerned right now about spacing the bars equally. We'll take care of that in a moment. Uncheck Auto Select. In the Layers panel, make Layer 1 active and scroll to the top. Shift click the top layer to make all of the vertical bars active. Go to Layer, Distribute, and Horizontally. This spaces the bars equally across our document. We'll group all the bars into a folder by pressing Ctrl or Command G. Make a copy of the folder by pressing Ctrl or Command J and go to Edit, Transform, and rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Merge both folders by shift-clicking the bottom folder and pressing Ctrl or Command E. Double-click the thumbnail to open its layer style window. Click Gradient Overlay and the Gradient Bar. Click the black white box. Click the lower left stop and the color box. Pick a color for one end of your gradient. Since I already know the color I want, I'll type it into the hexadecimal field 0, F, 1, B, F, F. Click the lower right stop and the color box. Pick a lighter, brighter color for the other end of your gradient. I'll type in F, F, 8, 7, 8, 7. Click OK on the color picker and the gradient editor. The blend mode is normal and the opacity is 100%. Check Reverse and make the style linear. Make the angle 90 degrees and the scale 100%. 
Then click OK. We'll convert our visible image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter, Distort, and Spherize. Make the amount 100%. Let's spherize it a little more by going back to Filter, Distort, and Spherize. This time, make the amount 25%. Open your elliptical marquee tool and go to a corner. Press and hold Shift as you drag a selection to the opposite corner. Pressing Shift kept the selection a perfect circle. Go to Select, Modify, and Contract. Contract it by two pixels. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. Next, we'll increase the space around our sphere and then make the background into a dark gradient. Go to Image and Canvas Size. Change the measurement to percent and type in 130% for the width and height. Make the background white. To fit the document back onto your screen, press Ctrl or Command-0. Make the background active and click the Adjustment Layer icon. Click Gradient. Make the style linear and the angle minus 90 degrees. The scale is 100%. Click the gradient bar and click the black-white box. Click the lower left stop, and for the location, type in 55%. Click the lower right stop, and the white box. In the color picker, for the brightness, type in 30%. Then, click OK on all three windows, or press Enter or Return three times. I'd like to make the brighter color of the sphere on top, so I'll go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. Next, we'll create the front of the sphere, which will begin to make it look three-dimensional. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of the shape. Double-click an empty area of the copy to open its layer style window. Click Bevel and Emboss. The style is inner bevel, and the technique is chisel hard. The depth is 100%, and the direction is up. The size is 6 pixels, and soften it 0 pixels. The angle is 60 degrees, and the altitude is 30 degrees. The highlight mode is linear dodge, and its opacity is 30%. The shadow mode is multiply, and its opacity is 20%. Click Contour, and open the preset thumbnails. Click the gear icon, and click Small or Large List. Click Ring, and click OK. Open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner, and when you see a curved double arrow, press and hold the Shift key as you rotate it clockwise until it snaps to minus 135 degrees. Then press Enter or Return, or click the check mark at the top. Next, we'll darken the inside of the sphere. Make the bottom shape active, and click the Adjustment Layer icon. Click Levels. We want the adjustment layer to affect only the one shape below it. However, since adjustment layers affect all the layers below them in the Layers panel, we need to make the adjustment layer into a clipping mask. To do this, click the Clipping Mask icon, or press Alt-Ctrl-G on Windows, or Option-Command-G on a Mac. 
You can also go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. In the Output Highlight Level field, type in 187. We'll convert a visible sphere into a smart object by clicking the bottom shape and shift clicking the top shape. Then open a list at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. If you're using the same colors as mine, let's increase their vibrancy by clicking the Adjustment Layer icon and clicking Vibrance. Clip it to the shape and increase the vibrance to 40. We'll brighten the colors by clicking the Adjustment Layer icon again and clicking Levels. Clip it and in the Input Highlights field, type in 229. Lastly, let's create the shadow under it. Scroll to the bottom of the Layers panel and Control click or Command click the sphere to make a selection of its shape. Click the Gradient Adjustment layer to make it active and make a new layer above it. Fill the selection with black, which is your foreground color. Then deselect it. Open your Transform tool and go to the top middle anchor point. If you're using a Photoshop version earlier than CC 2019, when you see a vertical double arrow, drag it down below the sphere. If you're using version CC 2019 or later, press Shift as you drag it down. Let's make the shadow a bit smaller. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in approximately this much. In CC 2019 or later, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag it in. Then press Enter or Return. Convert it into a smart object and go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 8 pixels. Reduce its opacity to 40%. To change the colors of our waffled sphere, make the sphere active and click the Adjustment Layer icon. Click Hue Saturation and clip it to the sphere. Then just slide the hue to the right or left to change its colors. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.